Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. Recently in a video about high-speed rail between Atlanta, Georgia, and Charlotte, North Carolina, I discovered a flaw in my super basic cost estimate method I've been using. The previous method considered if right-of-way was new or existing, then it looked at whether that was in an urban, suburban, or rural area. The method considered the relation to ground level, underground, aerial, or trench, or at grade. What I figured out in trying to rectify my Atlanta Charlotte estimate with official estimates is that I was not accounting for regional variances in construction, engineering, and land acquisition costs. I found a study that gives those amounts by state for highways and applied that to my method. I also normalized those amounts toward the national average by 10% to account for any outlying projects that may have unduly skewed these state averages. When I applied this to my estimate for the Atlanta to Charlotte Greenfield alternative in that video, the amount went from 43.3 billion to 14.3 billion. The latter amount matched up with official estimates much better. While this was great, I realized that since my method was mostly based on costs for Brightline West, any non-Brightline West estimate I've given to date also needs to be adjusted. This is nearly all of them, and that's what we're here for. Let's go through the videos one by one. In Where Did California High Speed Rail Go Wrong? I gave some estimates for a hypothetical alternative version of California High Speed Rail. Those are based on California High Speed Rail estimates and not my method, so those remain the same. For Chicago Hub, we had several estimates as solo projects, Chicago to Detroit and Cleveland via Toledo, Ohio, I had at 36 billion. Regionally cost adjusted, this would be 23.3 billion. Chicago to Cincinnati via Indianapolis was 24 billion. Adjusted, it is 17 billion. Chicago through Wisconsin via Milwaukee and Madison to Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. I had costing 48 billion. This becomes 29.4 billion when adjusted. 3C corridor in Ohio, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. I estimated at 23 billion. Regionally adjusted, this comes in at 13 billion. Chicago to Kansas City via St. Louis, I put at 46 billion. Thanks to Missouri being low cost, this comes down to 27 billion. The full Chicago hub network I proposed I had at about 200 billion. When adjusted, this comes to a more attainable 140 billion. Lastly, I talked about a possible West Michigan connector to sweeten the deal for a slightly neglected Michigan at $24 billion. Adjusting for typical costs in Michigan, this becomes $16 billion. Still a little expensive for what you get. In my first city pair video, I took a closer look at creating a high-speed route between Chicago and Indianapolis. I put the cost of that at $16.5 billion. Adjusted, this becomes $12.5 billion. This reinforces the idea that maybe high-speed rail isn't inherently expensive to build in the United States. Maybe we're just building it in the most expensive places. Speaking of that, I looked at the Empire Corridor from New York City through all of the major metro areas of upstate New York to the Canadian border and put that at $54.8 billion. Thanks to the relatively high cost of construction in New York State, this goes up to 58.1 billion. The second city pair video was a route between Phoenix, Arizona and Las Vegas, Nevada. I put the final cost of that at $43 billion. Regionally adjusted, that comes to 32.4 billion. I judged it wasn't worth building at 43 billion, a tougher decision at 10 billion less. In the Florida High Speed Rail video, I covered Brightline's potential route between Orlando and Tampa, Florida. However, I did not estimate cost as that video was not about electrified high-speed rail technology. The first Atlanta to Charlotte video, I put the airport to airport cost of the route I prefer at 33 to 39.6 billion. Adjusted, this comes down to just 11.4 to 13.7 billion. A downtown to downtown alternative I had costing 43.9 billion adjusts 
to 15.2 billion. This is slightly different than the 14.5 billion estimate found in the second Atlanta to Charlotte video. In that video, I used the state combination found in the Greenfield route. My Southern route has more mileage in Georgia, which is more expensive than the Carolinas. Lastly, the Gulf Coast Corridor. I estimated the total 1147 mile route would cost about $98 billion. Thanks to lower construction and land acquisition cost in every state involved, this adjusts to $45.8 billion. I also discussed the possibility of running high-speed rail from Dallas, Texas to Charlotte, North Carolina. Cost on that was about $160 billion. This adjusts to about $90 billion. Not bad for 1,700 miles of track. While some of these sound really cheap compared to the previous estimates, they're still on the high side compared to similar projects in Europe or Asia. That does it for the cost estimates. Sorry for any confusion or erroneous conclusion this may have caused. Of course, the adjustments are still an estimate. Maybe they're wrong. We won't have a better idea until someone builds one of these things. In the meantime, I'll continue looking for ways to improve the method of estimation. Let me know what you think about these new amounts, if it changes your opinion any, and which version seems more accurate. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.